The topics which would be covered in this session would include trying to understand the data size growth, the data explosion by using a case study from Digital Universe study, and what are the sources of big data, and trying to understand a case study of how much data is generated by Facebook, and why did big data suddenly become so important these days, and what are the characteristics of big data, the most commonly uh, heard things are the three Vs, which has now become six Vs of big data, and what are the use cases of big data, and the challenges of handling big data, both in terms of storage as well as processing. Hello and welcome to this session on Introduction to Big Data. It's a pretty common knowledge that like 1024 bytes forms a kilobyte. For the sake of discussion, it's been rounded off to 1000 bytes is equal to a kilobyte. So initially when we started off with the early days of computing, a file hardly exceeded few megabytes. And then it's pretty common knowledge that right now we are actually dealing with data of few gigabytes and terabyte. A one terabyte or a two terabyte hard drive is a pretty common thing what almost everybody has these days just to store and save the collection of movies or songs, whatever they have. The traditionally existing systems or the RDBMS based systems or whatever software has been there in place was quite comfortable handling up to terabytes of data. The real challenge started when we moved to petabytes of data. That is like 1024 terabytes or simply rounded off to 1000 terabytes actually forms a petabyte. So the current problem what we are trying to tackle is data which is larger than a few petabytes. So when we talk about big data, we are not dealing about the data which typically is going to be in terabytes Definitely, it's going to be more than a few terabytes, that's in petabyte and upwards. So the big data problems, what we are going to discuss and what has been in place all these years has mostly got to do with petabyte and above. You can have a look out here. It's exabyte, zettabyte, and yottabyte. Data can broadly be classified into three categories, structured data, unstructured data, and semi-structured data. Structured data is that which traditionally fits into the world of RDBMS, that is the Relational Database Management System, where the data is perfectly going to be aligned into some kind of rows or columns. A tabular format is going to be used for representing data in the tables of the relational databases. Typically, a few examples would be the data which is stored in the MySQL databases. Now, unstructured data the simplest way to try to understand unstructured data would be to try to think about a text file or a PDF document or the web server logs where it's just like pure verbose and there is no definite structure that what you can actually assign to this data. It can be plain text or it can be just numbers or sequence of bytes or whatever it is but you cannot actually tabulate the data. It cannot be stored in rows and columns or you cannot try to fit in any kind of schema for that particular data. So text files is the best example to understand unstructured data. The examples mentioned here are like the web server logs or whatever you message in your WhatsApp to your friends, even that's actually going to be plain text data with some attachment which might include photos or your voice messages. So all that actually forms the best example for unstructured data. Semi-structured data, it is that data which is somewhere in between structured and unstructured. The best example would be trying to understand it with the example of an XML file. When you consider an XML file, you would know that there would be several tags in the XML document. The tags try to impose some kind of basic skeletal framework for the data. However, the data which actually is embedded between the tags is an example of unstructured data. So unstructured data which we are trying to fit into some kind of schema or loose schema that is an example of a semi-structured data. So you're trying to give it a framework from an external perspective, but when you try to dig deeper, a fine granular analysis, it is still unstructured data, which is actually enclosed within some kind of schema, which is a perfect example of a semi-structured data. 